Well, hi guys, and welcome back to Mapping with Spring Hill. In this episode, we're going to look at how to create traps for the Dark Mod. Traps are a fantastic way to add additional gameplay to uh, missions in the Dark Mod. They were relatively common in Thief, but tend to be rare in the Dark Mod, probably because it's not always easy to figure out how to make traps. But we're going to solve that problem. I'm going to take you step by step through how to create some of the more common traps, and I'll include a prefab for you to download that you can drop right into your own map and customize to fit. In this episode, we're going to learn how to make a classic trap, the pressure plate trap that fires a single projectile. I've taken a small section from an existing map so that the lighting is already complete. And then at the far end there, you can see I've already created a spot where the projectile is going to come from. Now, it stands out like a sore thumb at the moment, but you do generally want to give players some kind of clue that the trap is coming up. To create this, all I did was draw out a brush, look for an appropriate texture, and then took a, a pipe mount model and uh, using one of the new dark radiant tools to resize it, shrunk it to fit over the center of the block. And uh, then I just put a dark decal in the middle just to make it look like there was a hole there. Now traps are made up of two components. There's the activator, which in this case is a pressure plate, and the result, which is the projectile. We're going to start with the result first. The first thing we're going to do is create an entity called a funk shooter. Now it's not under F. Uh, it's a specific dark mod uh, entity, so you have to look under the ATDM prefix, but add a funk shooter to your map. You'll see that it has an arrow, that's the direction that the uh, shooter or projectile will travel. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is line that arrow up with where I want the projectile to come from. Then we're going to change a few of the spawn args on the uh, funk shooter entity itself. So we're going to, uh, first of all, change the fire interval fuzziness to zero. Uh, that can affect how quickly the projectile comes out when the player triggers it. We're also going to set the pitch to zero so that the uh, projectile fires horizontally. Now the def projectile line uh, determines what the shooter will actually shoot. The default's a fire arrow projectile, um, but I don't actually like that as much because you can't see it in the air, you can only see it on impact. So you can change that by going to your dark mod def folder and looking for the TDM projectiles file. Open that up and you'll see a list of other projectiles that you can use. Um, we're going to try out the fireball here and see how that works. Just copy the projectile name and paste it into your entity. Now there are lots of other settings you can play around with. You can add delays, you can add some randomness to where the projectile fires or when, but the last thing we're going to put on is a, uh, a line that says start off one. And that's required to keep the shooter from just starting to fire the moment the map starts. And just to make this a little easier to reference later, we're going to change the name to fireball. And that's it for the shooter. Now we'll turn our attention to the activator which is a little more complicated. Now one of the first things you want to do when creating the pressure plate is make sure that you've got a texture that you can easily cut up into squares. A nice square pattern will make it easier for the pressure plate to look like it fits into the floor. Then you want to use the clipper tool to cut a segment of your floor that will become the pressure plate. So you need to uh, play around a little bit to make sure that the cuts line up with the, uh, the blocks in the texture. This can take some trial and error. This might be a good time to explain exactly how we're going to make this pressure plate. We're going to turn the block that we're creating into a movable and have that movable suspended in the air so that when anything touches it, including the player, uh, a weapon, another AI, it will cause that movable to fall. We're going to put a stim response effect on it that will cause the shooter to fire. 
This is the most robust method of creating a pressure plate trap that there is, but it does have one or two limitations. The first limitation is that the plate can't fall if it's touching anything. So we're going to make it one unit smaller on all four sides so that it's not actually touching the edge. This has the added benefit of giving the player another visual clue about where the pressure plate is. The plate also needs room to fall, so we're going to shrink it so that it's only a few units high. So once we have the plate the size that we want, we're now going to select it, go to Create Entity, and then under Movables, we'll go to the MISC folder and select Movable Base. So once the plate is now an entity, there's a bunch of uh, properties we want to add to it. If you click Show Inherited Properties, it'll be easier to find some of these. We want to make sure that the player can't frob the pressure plate, so we want to turn Frobable off. Uncheck that. I might as well uncheck Grabable as well, although I'm not 100% sure what that does. But one of the most important ones we want to make sure is set is No Drop. We want to set that to 1. That's what causes the plate to stay in position when the map begins and only falls when something touches it. We'll also rename this entity and call it Plate. Oh, this is a good time to mention another limitation about this being immovable. Uh, you must make sure that the plate is either level with the floor or slightly lower than the floor. If you raise it higher than the floor, then the player will actually hit the side of it and instead of the plate falling, the player will push it. And that's not the effect we want. Well, now we've got a hole in the floor that we've got to fix. I'm just going to put another stone brush down there. You want it to be low enough so that you leave room for the activator that we're going to create in a moment. But if it's too low, the plate will fall too far down and make a pit, which doesn't really look good. To make the activator itself, I'm just going to clone that brush I just used. And I'm going to fit it so that the activator rests on the stone block below and is one unit away from the plate above. You don't want it to be touching. Then I'm just going to put a no draw texture on it and then we're going to right click and convert it to a funk static. And we're going to call this plate trigger. Make sure that you don't have your Viz Portal filter on because if you do, anything textured with no draw will disappear. So if you can't find your activator, uh, check the filters. Next, we're going to go to the Stim Response Editor and we're going to create a custom stim. We'll call ours Fireball Trap, but it doesn't really matter what you use as long as it is a unique name. Now with the plate trigger selected, let's go back to the stim response editor and this time we're going to go to add stim. Now if you scroll down on the type list, you will see fireball trap and we'll select that. Over in the options on the right, we want to make sure that the radius uh, option is selected and use bounds is checked. And we'll change that default value from 10 to 0. So now click on the plate entity again and then open up the stim response editor and this time go to responses. We're going to add a response and then change the type to fireball trap and then right click to add a new effect, edit that effect and then change it to activate shooter. And in the shooter field uh, put the name of the funk shooter that we added. If you don't remember what the name is you can just use the drop down list and select it from there. So now what we have is our activator on the bottom and our plate on the top. And when the plate touches the activator, then it will trigger the shooter to fire. Now I did discover one little hiccup with this setup, and it has something to do with uh, the fact that stims and responses can't begin the game too close to each other. Currently, the origin of the activator is two units away from the edge of the plate. For some reason, and I don't understand why this is, 
if the origin is within four units of the edge of the plate, it acts as if it's already touching, and we don't want that. So what we're going to have to do is move the origin of our activator a little lower. So in this case, if we just lower the origin by two doom units, there's now four units between the origin and the edge of the plate, which is enough to keep it from firing on map start. Depending on how big you make your activator, you may not have this problem at all, but if you start the map and your shooter is already firing, this is very likely the cause. So at this point I tested the map, and I discovered there was something wrong with the projectile. It seemed to be impacting right on the surface of where it was supposed to come from. Now sometimes that can be caused by the Funk Shooter being buried into the wall a little bit, but even after moving it, the problem didn't go away. So since I didn't know what was causing it, I just switched to a different projectile. And now we can test our setup. So you can see that even with that gap around the edges, the pressure plate doesn't jump out at you. It would still be easy to miss if the player wasn't paying attention. So now we're going to drop something on top of the pressure plate and watch it work. Now, if, if you wanted projectiles to keep firing like this, you could just be done now. I mean, there are plenty of traps in Thief that continue to fire once they're activated. But I want this to be a single shot uh, trap. So to do that, we're going to go back to our map, select the plate, and then we're going to go back to the stim response editor. Go to the responses window and make sure that you click on fireball trap. We're going to add a new effect over in the response effects window, and then uh, right click on it to edit. And then we're going to select remove, and then pick the name of the activator. We called it plate trigger. So what's going to happen is that when the plate touches the stem and the stem fires, it's going to fire once, and then it's going to remove itself from the game so that it can only fire once. Now I also want to add some kind of sound effect from the plate so that the player knows that something has just happened. So first I'm going to add a regular speaker to the map and sort of scroll through and see what sound uh, I want. Then when I find the sound I like, I'm going to copy the name of it, uh, select the plate, go back to the stim response editor, add a new response, edit it, and this time we're going to select play sound shader. I actually don't know what the difference is between play sound and play sound shader, but I'm just using shader. Then paste the name of the sound you chose into the sound shader field. You can leave the other one blank. Now I just tested the map and realized there was one other thing I forgot to change. Uh, go and select the Funk Shooter, and you'll see that there is a property called Ammo. By default, that's set to minus one, which means that it'll continue to shoot indefinitely. That value, or that property, doesn't actually matter until you set the activator to be removed. Uh, once the activator is removed, then the number that you set under ammo counts. So I'm going to change that to one so that when it's activated, it will only fire one projectile. And now we have a working pressure plate trap. So the trap will activate if the player steps on it, it'll activate if a movable's dropped on it, it'll activate from being shot, uh, and it will activate if an AI walks on it or is dropped on it. So it's quite robust. my body but not my soul traps shouldn't be gotcha moments they should really be things that reward players for being observant and clever so if a player does notice a trap in advance you usually want a way for them to trigger or avoid it these kinds of traps can either be walked around or triggered on purpose with a movable or an arrow be careful about asking the player to rely on fancy footwork though because it's actually quite difficult to tell how close you can get to the trap without triggering it since you can't see your feet. 
One other word of warning from something I discovered. If you make your pressure plate out of wood, an arrow will stick in it and can cause uh, a lot of unnatural jiggling for quite some time. So I would recommend not using wood or if you want to look like wood, creating a new material shader that won't let arrows stick into it. And that's about it. You now know how to make a single projectile pressure plate trap. I'll include a link to a prefab of this setup in the description below. You can drop that into your own map and use it as an example or just reskin it so that it works with the textures that you already have set up. I hope this has been helpful and uh, I hope this is the beginning of seeing more traps in Dark Mod missions. Until next time, this is Springheel wishing you happy mapping.